All right, welcome back. This is lecture two, getting started in Python. So previously we discussed getting started at the command line, and now we're actually gonna to try to run some Python today. So this should be a pretty straightforward lecture. And we will start out just like we did before. One of the first things you need to do is open your command line interface. Uh, so this is terminal on a Macintosh, for example, a terminal on a Linux machine. Um, and you should also have the, uh, an opportunity to open it on your PC if you're using that. So we've opened it and now we're at the CLI. We can type stuff again and if you remember there was a bunch of commands that we learned. List to list the contents of a directory. PWD to print the location of our current file directory. Uh, so on and so forth. And one of the things we discovered at the end of the class, or not discovered, but one of the things we went over at the end of the class is that one of the programs that you can run is called Python 3. So if we type Python 3, we go into the interpreter, and then this just indicates that we're actually running a program. So one of the things that's really important to remember is that once we do this, we are no longer at the command line. We are not running command line things right here. So if we try to use the commands that we learned, if we try to do ls, or if we try to do uh, pwd, these do not work because the Python interpreter doesn't know what, you're, what we're trying to do. They don't use these sorts of commands. So that's the shell, the ZSH shell, that knows how to interpret ls, that knows how to do pwd. Python is a completely different language, and so you can't go back and forth. You can't use the commands at the command line in Python, and you can't use the things in Python at the command line. So this is one of the things that students often get confused about when they're first starting uh, to, to code. So we've entered the interpreter, and the way we know we've entered the interpreter is because we see these three uh, greater than signs. And so when you see the three greater than signs, you should know that I'm in the interpreter. If you see you know, something else, a different type of prompt, um, like this from the uh, ZSH, oh my ZSH um, program that we installed, uh, now we are at the command line. So, and again, the location of this executable program is actually within the file directory, and this is what we installed with Anaconda. So you should be using Anaconda or Miniconda, which is a, a streamlined version of Anaconda, to run Python. And we'll see why that's important you know, as we go through the class. But right now, just know that you should be using Anaconda. And the location of that is just in our home directory. The user's Python class is our home directory and then we go to the miniconda, and then the bin where these executables are stored. And so we see right here, there's something called Python 3 uh, within it. And so this is what we're actually running when we type Python 3. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Let me restart the terminal. Okay, so we type Python 3 and now we're in the interpreter. So now if we want to use the interpreter, we have to understand the language. So this is where we're learning the coding language in order to get Python to do useful things. So what can we do? So very straightforwardly, we could use Python as a calculator. Oh, and before we get into that, I just wanted to also highlight, make sure that you're always using the th the Python 3. Um, so you don't have to be using the 3.9.5 version if you're using 3.8 or if you're using 3.7 uh, or 3.9.4, like that most likely will be fine. And this is no longer as important as it used to be when I first started teaching the class when Python 2 is very popular, but you do not want to use Python 2. Python 2 is a legacy uh, language that is no longer really being supported. So how do you know if you're running Python 2? So this is an example. This is the location, the file location where Python 2 executable. And so if we type that, we can actually run Python 2. So notice we're running Python 2.7.16. So this is how we know we're running Python 2 because the first number starts with a two. Warning, Python 2.7 is not recommended. This version is, version is included in Mac OS for compatibility with legacy software. What does that mean? It means that no one is really using Python 2. The only reason it's there is there's probably really old code that was written that, that is still used in some way in, by the operating system. But eventually that code will also be rewritten so that it's Python 3 compatible. So everyone should be using Python 3 in this class. And so we're going to go, we're going to exit the interpreter, the Python interpreter. Um, and the way we do that is we hit control D. 
So if you look for the control and then hold that and then hit D, you'll be able to exit that interpreter. All right, so what are some things that we can do? We can add numbers, two plus three. Um, we can add floats together, so 2.0 plus 3.0. And we can also add, for example, or subtract uh, decimals from each other. And then Python prints back the answer uh, to, to, to what we request. So what are the different mathematical operators we can use? So plus is an example of a mathematical operator. Minus is an example of a mathematical operator. Uh, but we can also do things such as multiply two numbers together. And so the multiplication sign in Python is the asterisk. So hopefully you have seen the asterisk be used for multiplication before. Uh, but if not, that's just a very common uh, CS way computer science way to indicate that you want to multiply. So we can multiply six times two together and we can get 12. Division, that is the backslash. backslash. Um, so find the backslash on your computer. And if you want to divide two numbers, you use that. You can also find the remainder. So this is less common, but sometimes you might want to use this. Um, Typically, if you only want to do something, you know, every hundred times that you go through a loop is kind of the, the most common way I ever see it used. Um, but you can also get the remainder of something. So, so that is the percentile. Um, and so, you know, let's just go through this. So one, one remainder three is one, uh, two remainder three is two, three remainder three is zero. So that's just the leftovers. You know, this is very elementary junior high math um, that we're going over right here. You can also return the floor of the division of two numbers. So you use the double backslash, and then instead of giving you 3.5, like it would be for a division, you give the floor of the answer. So seven, th the floor of 3.5, you just round down to the nearest integer, so it'd be three. Um, this, for example, if nine divided by four is 2.25, but because we're taking the floor of it, it's equal to two. You can also do the power. So let's say you wanted to do you know, three squared. How would you do that? Um, you combine two asterisks together and then Python is able to do three to the second power, so three squared, and you can choose any of the numbers that you might want to do. Three to the ninth is 19,683, et cetera. Um, you know, if you try to do something like this, where you put a space in between the two stars, Python doesn't know what to do, and so now we see an exception, what's called an exception is thrown. So in syntax error indicates that we've made an error of syntax, and what that is saying is that it doesn't know how to interpret that star space star. So if you put the asterisk space asterisk, it doesn't know what we're trying to do. The syntax is incorrect. We always have to put those together um, in order, to, in order to, to use this. And so why it's still invalid syntax because we have to have a number, for example, before we do that. So if we don't follow the syntax of it, then it's confused and it doesn't know what, what we're trying to do. So we can't just put the first number and then do the two stars. We have to say, okay, we want two to what power? Hopefully this is pretty straightforward. Uh, Python functions. Um, we also can use what are called functions. So functions are very, very common in any sort of coding language. These are the things that do the exciting things uh, in coding and 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 you know kind of why coding is so is so useful so we are just going to briefly start using a, a function and soon we're going to get into these in a lot more detail but for now we're just going to use a very simple function and this is called the print uh print commit print function so functions are kind of like verbs uh they do something they perform some sort of action and then functions the way you can recognize a function is that they have parentheses after them. So, so if, if you want to use a function, you give it the name of the function. So the syntax, the proper syntax of how you use it is that you give the name of the function and then you put uh, open and closing parentheses. And in between these open and closing parentheses are 
the uh, the arguments that it takes. So we saw arguments in the command line lecture where you know something like change directory, so cd. When we tried to use cd at the command line, we had to give it the name of the uh, directory we wanted to, to, to go to. So something like this, cd is the name of the command, and then the argument is given by separating it with a space. So that's, that's one syntax of how you can actually you know, do this, but Python uses a different syntax. So instead of doing a space and doing something like this, where we say what we want to print, um, you, you, you're actually going to get an error this way. So it's a syntax error. So print is a function, and then in order to give it the arguments, you have to use an open and close parentheses. So now we are able to call this, this function print. And what does print do? Very simply, prints whatever is within this statement right here um, to, the standard, uh, to the standard out. And so the Python interpreter just prints it back at you. So you can do whatever sort of um, string. And so we'll get into strings in the next lecture in a lot more detail. But a string is designated by putting it in quotes. So we, we, we put um, the whole string that we wanted to, to print out in the presence of, the, of these two quotation marks. If we do this incorrectly, so if we forget, for example, to include those quotation marks, we get a syntax error. And so the print doesn't know how to take all of this welcome to class. Uh, this is an incorrect syntax because it, it's expecting you to send a string to it. All right. And so now it works. And you can also whoop, send a single number to it, and it'll print that out, out as well. So we'll see how printing becomes more useful when we start to actually run scripts. And uh, you know, when you're using the interpreter like we are right now, typically you don't ever use the print statement. But it becomes very useful when you're actually running, running scripts, um, as we'll see a little bit later. Python also has variables. So pretty much every single command, uh, every, almost every single coding language, you know, Python, JavaScript, Java, R, has variables. And so variables are very useful to store information in. So how can we do that? So an example of that is doing something like this. So we have created a variable, and we've named it x. And we have set x to be equal to 8. Okay. So now what happens if we type x? Oh, it's equal to 8. We can also print the value of x using the print statement. And then again, we get 8. We can also add to a variable. So we take x and we add 2 to it. And then it does that math and it returns 10. And any of those mathematical operators that we saw above, for example, the power, um, we can do for x. So notice that all of these things that we're doing right now, you know, we can do all sorts of mathematical operations. And you print out the, the answer. But notice that you never actually change x. So it prints out the answer, but it doesn't actually change x. So if you want to change x, you can certainly do that. But you have to use what's called the assignment operator. So the equal sign is known as the assignment operator. And it just does just kind of what you think it's going to do. So we can do something like x equals x to the second power. And so the answer now is 64. So instead of printing that out, you know, before if we did this, it would print 64 out. It takes that answer and then it puts it within the, the x variable. So now we've changed the variable x to be equal to 64. And if we wanted to set it back, we just use the assignment operator again. And now we set it back to 8. There's also shorthands. Um, sometimes these are, these are useful. Uh, so let's say I wanted to take x and I wanted to add 2 to it and set it uh, as, as the new value of x. So you know, you could do it something like this, where you say x equals x plus 2. Um, but a shorthand way to write this is this. So this is the plus equal sign. And so this basically, this what this says is it says 
take x, add 2 to it, and then set that as the new value of x. So x is, worth, is equal to 10 right now, and so we run this, and so we should see it equal to 12, and lo and behold, it's equal to 12. Now if we do something like this, minus equals 2, we are going to take x, and we're going to subtract 2 from it, and now it's equal to 10. Uh, pretty much all of those mathematical operations that we saw up here, you can also do this with. So if I wanted to take x and square it and set that as the new value, now I set it equal to now it's equal to 100. So hopefully this is pretty self-explanatory. So the interpreter um, typically automatically prints out to the screen anything returned to the, by the expression. So an expression, for example, would be equal it would be this. And so the value of this is printed out to the screen. Unless we add the assignment operator, then in that case, it doesn't print out to the screen, but it actually modifies the variable that we're trying to modify. So these are all kind of examples of the different assignment operators that allow you to mod modulate, mo modify a variable and set it equal to the new variable. All right, so now let's start to get into the details. Actually, I'm going to pause this lecture and restart it at a new video. It might be easier.